is like the recession pack. Like when you kind of think of it, there is one here that is not like the others, but for the rest of them, they're yeah. basically the recession pack. Yeah. You need to get some things here. Yeah. I've got five more for you. All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. We're doing more blind wine tastings as ever. Uh, Big shout out to Different Drop for hooking us up with these different, well, they don't look very different. They look like very similar drops this week. Hooking us up with six red wines that we're about to taste for you. And as always, if you want to drink any of these wines yourselves, head over to the Different Drop page. There's actually a special little landing there with the Wine for the People wines. You get a little discount on that. Helps us out, helps you out. You're getting reviewed wines. We're getting a little kickback from Different Drop, so please do. And we're playing one of my favorite games this week. Five of these wines under $30 and one of them is over $100. I think I'll do this. I'm confident. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm gonna get this done, but I've got expensive taste, let's see if it lines up. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. We have to decide what is over 100. Speaking of which, when was, what's the most expensive wine you guys have tried at home, or out, uh, and was it worth the money? We're gonna see whether or not we can pick that and whether it is worth the money. Um, this it certainly doesn't expel expensive, um, and I don't want it to be. Oh, actually, I do. I do want it to be. I want all of these ones to be over 100 bucks. Uh, that would be great. I'm not going to worry about variety or anything like that. I'm literally just going to play the man here. Uh, that is less than 30. Is that how the less than sign? No, I've just done greater than 30. All right, hang on. Ooh. Very fresh, although very sort of mid palate weight. Medium acid, medium tannin, like medium intensity of aromatics. It's leading me down the path of like a Tempranillo or Montepulciano, maybe a bit of a cheeky blend of something or other. Delicious wine though. Because 30 is greater than X. Yeah, got it. All right, uh, I'll have one bottle of that. It certainly better not be around $100. I guess, you know, not, I think this wine is delicious. I think this wine is outstanding. It is crunchy, fun, fruity, like really pretty, super great acidity, easy to drink. I'm getting 12 of these, there's no doubt about it. Bright sour cherry thing, and it's got some like herbaceous characters, but yum, yum, yum. So yeah, definitely getting 12, no doubt about it. I'm not paying 100 bucks. So that's the more about the color. I like the smell of this one a lot more. Oh wow. It's like if you're tasting the color purple, and it's not just the, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, like purple grapes, like grape uh, Fanta. I love this. Again, again I'm getting 12. This is delicious. Crunchy red berries, like racy kind of currants and raspberries and cherries. So floral, so perfumed. It's not $100, and at least I certainly hope it isn't. Again, high acid. Beautiful texture, beautiful finish. Heavy hitting wine. This one's a tough one. This could well be over 100 bucks. Wouldn't surprise me if it is. Um, I'd personally pay around about 26 bucks. Um, delicious, delicious wine. So pretty, so aromatic. Absolutely gorgeous. No, it's not expensive. This is going with. I reckon it's Grenache. 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 OG Grenache. Grenache. $45 a bottle for this, and I would buy six. Uh, like the, 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 these first two wines are definitely not weird or wacky from like crazy producers. They are just really remarkably well made. Variety, doesn't matter, who cares? Delicious, nonetheless, could be a blend. Uh, absolutely, again, love this. Two cracking wines to start off. I think they're bargains. Uh, wine number three, we're getting into something that is not filtered, which for me actually is that thing in my head that goes, uh, is probably gonna be something that is gonna hit this $100 thing. I'm looking for uh, a faded rim, so not a rim that actually uh, terminates uh, at the edge of this, uh, we'll call it, well, I call it the meniscus, because uh, that's what it is called, but most people don't use that words when they're talking about food or wine drinking, they just drink the fucking thing. Mm hmm mm hmm So this smells like Pinot. I'm just gonna pop that slightly out of line. I'm not definitely saying that it's under 30. So remember the, I'm just having so much fun with like little math symbols here. Remember the like equals two, but they're wavy equals two because you're like, I don't know, it could be. Maybe equals 30. I, I respect it for what it is, but it's not something that I personally uh, spend money on. Uh, and it's my own personal bias. I don't believe that this is um, the $100 bottle. I'd spend around about 20 bucks a bottle and I'd buy one bottle. Again, the uh, it's not faulty, it's just not a flavor I like. 
beautiful, perfume, powerful Pinot. But I'm gonna hedge my bets here because this could be an absolute steal. I hope it's an absolute steal. Like we had that, that Fringe Society Pinot ages ago that was amazing, that was under 30 bucks, but I would be absolutely stunned if it is. So that's my current hedge. I'm getting 12 and I'm not gonna put the price down just yet. I'm not, I'm not writing price down. I would pay well, you know, north of $70 for this because I think it's fantastic, but I'm not writing it down just yet. Just, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, brilliant wine, brilliant wine. If you did spend hundred bucks on that, you wouldn't be disappointed. Are you sure you wanted your wine to smell like that? It's like sometimes you know when you see someone out in public and you're like, so you don't have any reflective surfaces in your house because you left the house looking like that. Like you sure you wanted, you sure? Yeah, brick tawny hued. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful nose. Uh, straight away, my, my entire sort of head is, has been transported into Italy, potentially Northern Italy, and could be a contender for the $100 bottle easily. <laughs> all right, all right. 12. Ah, fuck, we might be going to, I, I don't think I've ever done the full 12 in a row before, but I'm getting there. Yeah, it does. It does taste nice. Um, one of those things where you meet someone and you're like, oh, really red beanie, and then you have a chat and you're like, oh no, they're actually all right. Interesting. Um, no, I don't think it's a $100 bottle, but I do think it's a very compelling one. I think it is like a $28, $35 a bottle. Uh, Val Policella from Northern Italy. Cracking wine though. Like, I'm gonna put down 35 bucks because I know the sort of market rates for, for this wine, if I'm correct. I, well, it's definitely a 12 for me and I think it's a fantastic wine and I would pay, I'd be happy to pay north of 100 bucks at this. Um, there it doesn't have, there is that like, lack of aging potential for the wine because it is so kind of even, it probably is drinking at its peak now. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go on that Neb verse and I'm getting 12, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go $30 um, because it better be at that, at that point. But it's fantastic wine, there's no doubt about it. Number five, getting a little bit darker, getting a little bit richer, definitely deeper. This also feels quite unfiltered as well, but I think they've done a really good job of it. Wine number five. Ooh. It smells like money. A little bit of spice, savouriness. This is a wine with power. Um, although, see how it's got like, it's got the um, extraction, the density, even the bubbles are black, you know, look at that. Awesome wine, really, really delicious. Unfortunately, I'm gonna get six, sorry. Sorry, clean dozens, you're not here today. And I definitely think this is in that $30 area because the primary fruits on this thing are fantastic. Like that, it is still so like black cherry, like fresh, fresh strawberry, like that like kind of nice, like perfectly ripe raspberry thing. It's not overripe, it doesn't go down, like it really looks and feels like it go down that like fig prune thing. Pimping out a red wine, it's like, ah, oh, so you like red fruit? We put red fruit in your red fruit, so when you're drinking your red fruit, the red fruit's got fruity flavors to it, that sort of thing. This is just sort of like, oh yeah, I like red fruit. Is any of this making sense? You're, you're with me, right? Yummy. I mean, look, I pay more than, I, I find it hard to believe that this is less than 30 bucks a bottle. Really, I pay about 65 to 80, uh, and I would buy 12. What a cracking, cracking wine. Yeah, if that's anything less than 30 bucks, that is a, a, a astonishing deal. If it's about 100, it would be appropriate, but it would be a stretch. Uh, and I'd say there's probably some context into what's bringing it to that price. Maybe rarity, maybe a particular producer. We'll have a look. Wine number six. The last opportunity to knock it off its perch. Let's see how it goes. Tannin as well. Uh, could well be something like a, or something. Um, I think it's a very impressive wine. I don't think it's a hundred dollar bottle though. Wow, 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 wow. That's a pretty amazing, like, if it's 100 bucks, it deserves to be. If it's 30 bucks, it's an absolute bargain. But like this like gorgeous, like blue, like black currant, like brilliant bouquet of fruit, like all across the palette. Yep, that's the expensive one. Sorry, mate, you're back in line. Wine number six, 100 bucks plus. Mm, hard. Wine number three. That wine that I judged really harshly as being stemmy and sapid and not my thing, I was wrong. The only thing that I'll that I is holding me back from going the full hundo is the fact that you can get really good bargains in this kind of category. There are some like wines that are really, really amazing, but also in that $25 to $30 range. And I have a feeling this kind of might sit in that spot. But regardless, it, you know, this may be from a producer that has an incredible top end, and this is like one of their ways of like, you know, probably from an incredible vintage then just whittling down from that top end. And I think 
Uh, it's hard, man. This is really tough. I'd almost say number three potentially could be. Um, by its nature, it's very well crafted Pinot Noir, maybe from like an, a bit of an odd vintage, or maybe it's just looking very closed and needs some time to open up, uh, or potentially wine number five. Well and truly, in my opinion, it's it's worthy of 100 plus price point. I think it's fan fantastic. Wine at number three is my winner, and let's get the boys in and debate. Remember earlier in this episode when I was just like, I'm gonna nail this. Uh, dozen. No, it's not. I'm just gonna say some variety in Nora and Brendan are gonna do that classic thing where they go like, maybe it is. That's what they're gonna say when I say this is, I don't want them to hear me say it too loud. I'm gonna say Cabernet though. That's what it is. That's what it is. Let's see what the boys think. I don't know, man. I was so confident going into this, but I'm nowhere now. Guys, how did you go? Do you reckon you managed to pick the expensive wine out of the lineup this week? No. Nah. Quietly confident, but can't be assured because there's some belters in here. They're all really good. All right, They're all really, really good. Why don't we do, on the count of three, we say which number <sighs> one we think is the expensive one, okay? I'm like 50 50 on two, though. It's not how this works. Oh, yeah, oh. you've got to, you've got to, you've got to commit. Commit. You've got to yeah. commit. All right, yeah, ready? On the count of three, we both, we all say what wine we think is expensive. One, two, three. Three. Six. That's really fun. I had, I was tossing up between three and six. I was talking about three and five. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I was, I was, Three, four, and six. All right, I'll feel good about it if it's three, but I'll feel even better if it's six. But yeah, as you should. <laughs> this is, what is this? <laughs> I did not like number one. It was my least favorite of the oh, lineup. Oh, Sleeper. Just, let's sour grapes. Oh, yeah, Sleeper. That's exactly why I loved it. I wanted 12, I thought it was delicious. Pe like, fun party juice. This has seen a little bit of like really smart elevage. It's been really, really suavely crafted. It's not trying to pull a philosophy. It's just good damn wine. For that reason, it wasn't my sort of hundred dollar bottle. Oh. Yeah. But the finish on it kind of makes me kind of go, someone's done something smart here. No. I just thought it was super fun, sour cherry party juice, put it in an ice bucket, let's <laughs> go. Let's go. Nah, it's, it's just too sour for me, I think. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, they're flavor-wise. It, like, it's not, it's not a wine that tastes wrong. It just doesn't, it's not what I want, sort of thing. So one for 30 I had. I had 12 for 29. Six for sixty. You know the yeah no, and I was like I th I don't think oh, it's you, fair uh, on the audience for me to just go they're all thirty bucks and I'm gonna pick the hundred. I'm gonna go how much would I actually pay if I saw a blind? Oi, Gamay, Savoy, nice man, Savoir, dude, Savoir Gamay for twenty two bucks. Yeah, you can get this everywhere as well. You can get this in bloody dance. Under screw cap now as well. Jeez, that's mental. Recession wines, <laughs> like total. <laughs> Total in like recession, inflation wines. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like that's that's how do you how do you get a cracking wine when you don't like no longer have the budget? Yeah, it's not it's something a you'd good be, one. It's not something you'd be educating people about. Like this is what gamay tastes like, which it doesn't really taste like. This is like the recession pack. Like when you kind of <laughs> think of it, there is one here that is not like the others. But for the rest of them, they're yeah. basically the recession pack. Yeah. You need to forget some things here. Yeah. I've got five wines for you. Absolutely. Um, wine number two. I was more into this one. Mm -hmm. Still not my favorite. Still didn't think it was going to be breaking the budget either. I thought it might have been a Grenache yeah. or something. In that, in that ballpark. Totally. In yeah. That yep. Um, mm. I said six for, well, less than 30. But yeah, given it was six, I usually pay about $45 for a six bottle, six pack. I loved it just as much as I did the first one. I thought it was delicious. I loved how mm. floral and pretty aromatically it is. Yeah. Um, and it's just so much fun to drink. Yeah, I went, I went 12 for 26 bucks. Uh, six and I'd pay 45 for them. I'd probably, pay, I'd probably end up paying, like I'd be happy to pay 35 for that. Pretty and easily. how much would we have to pay for a bucket? Oh, damn. I love Shit, these bargain wines. These yeah, are great. Fun. These are great. Oh, let's try the Grenache Mataro Tariga. I'm with a uh, GMT, not GST. Again, speaking of recession wines. <laughs> uh, got him. Uh, uh, Varney Wines. Oh, who is Varney Wines? I can't remember, but this is uh, uh, pr produced out uh, near uh, Nor Nor Lunga, Victor Harbour Road, Nor Lunga. So, oh, nice. yeah, Flurio kind of way. Yeah, um, that one that you drive past on the way down wine. to. Yep. Amazing cool. wine. Well, there's several of them. That's super delicious. Yeah. That is super delicious. Great Done price, well. great label, good juice. Done Get really winner. well. Big winner. Local really winners. Really well. Wine number three, which you guys think is the Spenny Boy. Yes. Do you know, I, I, when I encountered this, I ripped it a new one. And I was like, not my cup of tea, not good. And I went back because I still, at the end, hadn't identified which one of these really, like, reliably is going to be the $100 one. And I just smelt this thing and I'm going, oh, damn, I got this wrong. Yeah. I got this really... <laughs> Real wrong. This is awesome. Yeah, immediately it smells it smells Pinot Noir. 
Yeah. Um, if it's under $30, I'll be, you know, taking out a small loan to get as much of this as I can because, you know, you don't get Pinot Noir at this price point anymore. It is starting to not exist. Um, I but thought it was New Zealand, maybe. I immediately thought New Zealand. I was like, this felt like some amazing central attack. Bring that back here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt that the, I was trepidatious about the hundred dollar mark on it, just because oh. it felt a bit short in the palette, um, like a little bit lean, which means that I'm like, it's 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 weird conundrum. It could be like a Targo Pinot, or it's that cheeky giant steps number. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is at a sub 30 bucks. They don't do sub 30 anymore at Giant Steps. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, the, I, the conundrum. Yeah, I, I literally had it as, there were two that I had listed as the hundreds and I changed it the last minute just because it was the last one and I had recency bias on it, I reckon. But yeah, Pinot Noir, delicious. I had a dozen of it. Dozen. Dozen, 65 bucks, I'd go. Yay! Oh, yeah. This has such a yeah, as, place, as it should well be. Done, Thanks, Blake. I love the fact that he's got at least a solid minute of me tearing hey. this one and you one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Burn Cottage Otago <laughs> Pinot 2020. There we go. Well yeah. done. 100%. New Zealand? Yeah, New Zealand. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Hundo P. <laughs> banging. Banging. I haven't tried any of these ones before. Um, Fracking wine. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, Unfracked. as it should be, 110 bucks. Su super young. Oh, sweet. Well, lunch. <laughs> lunch. That's lunch. Jeez, that's opening up now. That's taken a solid almost hour. Yeah. That has taken almost an hour to get to that point. Now that is another whole wine entirely. Drink, drink that on Wednesday, it's gonna be fucking something else, I reckon. Yes, something man. else. It also improves with age, but yeah, definitely like a good curry. Point. Yeah, um, it was yummy. <laughs> well, that means we've got some bargains for the rest of the line. Yeah, we got a couple of big bargains, actually, yeah. Uh, number four, I thought that this was a nice little Serrari sort of territory type deal. Uh, it's got some plenty. Wrong country, bro. Yeah. Shirazi sort of country. Wrong country. <laughs> Wrong, no, this is nah. This isn't in that Nebverse. I, I've gone, yep, Nebverse, but then uh, go east a little bit into Valpol territory. You reckon Valpol? I reckon this is, this is really cheeky Valpol. Throwing it to the winds of chance here. I had a Valpol on the weekend, it was nothing like this. Freaking delicious wine. Mm. Didn't think it was 100 bucker. I thought it was a good red herring though. Yep. Solid red herring for, for the Neb fans. $25. $25. Dollars. Um, Twenty four. What is it? Um, you can get it everywhere. Longe. Um, <laughs> me, me, me does it in. That's yeah, Moretti. Yeah. yeah. See, boom. Wow. Yeah. We've Played seen game, we've seen Moretti's um, Barolo before. Yeah. On the show. And it was like fifty bucks. Yeah. And it was like, where? How is this happening? This is. I think this is. Um, uh, it's third wave wine. I want to say. And their, their sort of shtick, the thing that they do is they go and acquire wines and whack their own label on, but they inquire, I'm pretty confident this is third wave wine, and they sort of um, import and whack their own label on. Yeah, right, sure. so they're not making the wine. Yeah, for, sorry, I want to say fourth wave wine. You're yeah. close, you're only yeah. way off. Uh, so yeah, I don't believe Moretti is an actual producer, it's a brand. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's a, a negotiation enterprise so it's more of like brand. A curation. Mm. Uh, number five. This was mm. my. Uh, I got three dozens. I got number three, number five, and number six is my dozens. Yeah. Loved this. Big, uh, big fan this of five. Little gamay sort of thing. This was my only wine that wasn't a dozen. Wow. Really? Yeah, only one that wasn't a dozen. This, but this I, is I why we six. work as a group. We're yeah. so, so oh, opposing yeah. all the time. This is still, I still got sixes. I thought this was really good. But yeah, you never get to hear an opinion from the three of us. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, like it's oh, it smelled wow. really like you know Shirazi and immediately, mm. but it's like quite mm. delicate. I, I have a feeling it's like similar mm. to that like kind of uh, GMT blend. I reckon this could be like a uh, GSME kind of thing. That's gone really sort of SMG. like anchovy, seafoody, briny on the nose now as well. Yeah, it sounds like McLaren Val Shiraz or something like that to me. Yeah, uh, I wanted Big a dozen fan. for yeah, like less than thirty bucks is an awesome deal on that. Mm. Uh, I had a dozen for sixty-five to eighty bucks. Yeah. I thought that was a, a really good deal. Six for 30 and I would pay 30. Like a Stemi Syrah. Oh, I really like it. How much was it? Oh. Reminds Sorry. me of like Riley Harrison stuff maybe. Maybe his is more, more, he's more than that. Best. Dude. See that behind king. bars all over the place, hey? Total yeah, we king. We behind bars here. It's like somewhere on the We have them here, here. yeah. We, we big. It. It's fucking great. Um, we love this wine so much, we bought it at Unico. Uh, and we have cases of the stuff sitting around here for every time we want to scratch that itch. Yeah, mm. which is like, what a wine. like this time of year. But like to have a Syrah from the Barossa at, you know, 14% alcohol being that pretty, it's just, yeah. it's unbelievable. Peach shell, cracking winemaker. Kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah. Good. We took one, another one. We've got a great history of South Australian <laughs> winemakers from uh, well, New Zealand. wine in South Australia yeah. from New Zealand. And then number six. Yum. Yum. 
This is Cabernet. Awesome. I said Cabernet. <gasps> Dude, when I was picking this, I was like, I'm gonna say Cabernet, but I bet the boys are gonna say, oh yeah, you would think it's Cabernet. That's it. Fuck. It's like got it. some like that blackberry cassisi thing. It doesn't have like the eucalypti stemmy thing yeah, that yeah. goes on with it. It's Margaret River Cabernet. Yeah, something like that. Or it could be it could be like um, in New Zealand as well. Mm. But yeah, mm. it's cool. stunning. Mm. It smells mm. it's also got that like you know black blackberry yogurt thing it's, as well. It's purple, it's not red, like it is a purple. Um, one. 100%. So this is the one that, uh, like I had this sitting out as like, this is the expensive one, this is definitely it. Mm. And I tried this and I'm like, whoa, hang on, this is a... Uh, oh. The only thing that makes, um, that made me not go with this is the 100 plus one, is because you can get more bargains in this category than mm. you can get in that category. Yeah, fair. Like, so that's the only reason that I think it really sticks out. This, this is a wine at that kind of quality level. It is delicious. Yeah. What are we doing? Please Dale, Malbec. Please Dale, I grew up on this one. Fuck. Langhorn Creek. Langhorn Creek. Now, this is where you can get the bargains because it is such an underdog region, but Malbec in Langhorn Creek, it is just a perfect marriage for. Isn't it funny how Malbec's just kind of it was a thing about maybe 10 years ago and people yeah. were really like jumping on the Malbec bandwagon. Um, there was a bunch of events that came out in Australia really sort of um, pushing the Malbec agenda. Uh, and then we've all kind of just forgotten about it. Yeah. Um, and it's such a, a loss to the greater wine industry because at, like for a wine that ticks so many boxes, mm -hmm. like texturally, mm -hmm. um, extract, acid, uh, yeah. great to grow, mm -hmm. amazing story. Like Bleasdale's amazing Malbec, but when you go into Argentinian Malbec, some amazing stories. Oh, it's Bordeaux, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, it's got such a long history. Mm. Um, but, you know, it, there's, there's no, make Malbec sexy again. 100%. Uh -huh. My, so one man who hasn't forgotten about uh, Malbec is Ian Doyle, my father, who <laughs> actually used to make his own Malbec at Bleasdale called the Red Gum Selection. Wow. Was, yeah, so like literally this is like the wine of my childhood and I called it fucking cabin. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we managed to pick the expensive one, which I'm very proud of us yes. now. Yeah, nicely done. But <clears throat> wine of the week though. Shit. Is it, is it the expensive one? Uh, look, uh... I'd want to, if... It's the one I'd drink the most of, but like, no, I wouldn't because I wouldn't buy it. It really much. depends on the lens that you look at it in, because is it probably, the, it is the best wine of the bunch, mm. I personally think. I think it's the... the, the marginally. Marginally, marginally. But you know, like value for money, it definitely doesn't hit that spot. I'm um, in that territory, except Noah wasn't a fan of the, the Syrah. No, nah, I wasn't a fan of I like... Uh, I, and we're all on this. Yeah. Still, and yeah, I also just like Bleasdale because like... It's a good wine. It's a fucking great wine. You know what? Screw it. Malbec. Langhorn Creek Malbec from Bleasdale. Wine of the week. Wine yeah. of the week. 29 bucks. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. It's a Malbec voice. Stunning boys. wine. But I mean, honestly, that was one of the best lineups we've ever had. One of the best lineups we've ever had. Fucking banging across the board. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for another week. We'll be back soon with more better films and more great wines. See you then. Or the other way around, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? What?